is uh, actually Vivekananda himself who said that you think I am a, a jnani but I am all love inside and uh, the old man he was bhakti on the outside inside he was all jnana that means old man means Sri Ramakrishna so that's a quote from Vivekananda but anyway the point is correct but the, what, whatever has been asked in the question the point is correct that we think of Sri Ramakrishna and with good reason if you see the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna if you read the life of Sri Ramakrishna he is a devotee he is a child of the mother mother uh, divine mother Kali for him God was mother and he re always had the attitude of a child to the mother with regard to God what um, now so we have solid grounds for thinking of Sri Ramakrishna as a devotee, as a lover of God, as a bhakta. And if you see the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna in the Kathamrita, the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, it is predominantly bhakti and he often recommends bhakti very clean, in no uncertain terms. On the other hand, Vivekananda, especially his talks here in the West and also in India, predominantly Vedanta, and his life and his teachings from Sri Ramakrishna are predominantly a path of knowledge, realization of who am I, I am that limitless Brahman. But here Vivekananda says, it's only what you are seeing is the surface. On the outside Sri Ramakrishna is Bhakti, inside he is all Jnana. On the outside I seem to be Jnana, knowledge, but inside I am, I am uh, a Bhakta. I am, I am very soft indeed, he says. <laughs> I have the heart of a woman, he says, inside. Um, so, what does it mean? I think it's true for all of us. All of us have elements of this knowledge and devotion, love and knowledge. Now, depending on what is expressed outside, you might, people might categorize you as somebody on the path of knowledge. You might yourself categorize yourself as somebody on the path of knowledge. And... Uh, uh, the devotional aspect might be a very, the love aspect might be a very private thing within you. Others might not see it or might see less of it. Or the reverse might be true. Uh, you might be regarded as a devotee, a person who loves and worships and adores God. And the knowledge aspect of it might be uh, hidden, uh, sort of, uh, uh, at, at your core, uh, inner aspect of it. Uh, I think it was... Uh, uh, it was the great psychoanalyst Jung who pointed out that every person has the male and the female within themselves. Mm -hmm. Similarly, bhakti and jnana. One of uh, Vivekananda's compositions about Sri Ramakrishna, it goes like this, um, that outside he had the radiant, he put on the radiant cloth of bhakti. And inside, Advaya Tattva Samahita Chittam, his mind was constantly centered in the non dual Brahman, Sri Ramakrishna. About Vivekananda, Swami Premeshananda wrote a song with, which has the names of Sri Ramakrishna, Masharada, uh, Vivekananda, and all the direct disciples of Sri Ramakrishna, and uh, a descriptive word or two about each of them. About Vivekananda, Swami Premeshanji writes, Parama Dayala, one of a great heart, the tremendous compassion. So somebody asked Swami Premeshananda, did we know Vivekananda is this great yogi, this dynamic worker, uh, this great person of, of you know, philosophy and knowledge? But why did you write Parama Dayala, the, of great compassion? And so Premeshanji replied that, who had a heart like Vivekananda's? And you will realize as you go forward in life, uh, he was all compassion for, the, for all of us. On a personal note, if I ask you, what do you think my pre preeminent disposition is? <laughs> so you're laughing, it seems <laughs> like a no-brainer, what the Americans call a no-brainer. So many people think, yes, my preeminent disposition is knowledge, the path of knowledge, the path of non-duality. I remember a very senior monk was one of my mentors who said to me long ago, more than 20 years ago, he said to me, stop doing that, this I am Brahman, Advaita, non-duality, your path is devotion. <laughs> your path. 
<laughs> you are a bhakta the inside <laughs> so that. and the other point which was raised was that you have i have said um, that which is greater among the two bhakti is the highest in jnana there is no higher and lower actually i was quoting a monk uh, a traditional non dualist monk from the himalayas who was asked this question so it was a provocative question because he was clearly a non dualist advaitin he was asked in hindi kon badi gyan ya bhakti who is greater knowledge or devotion and the monk's startling answer was bhakti badi hai devotion is love is higher and the everybody was taken aback they didn't expect that answer from that monk because that monk is clearly on someone on the path of knowledge so they uh, they asked him bhakti badi hai to gyan kya hai if uh, if devotion love is greater than what about knowledge and then the monk replied gyan mein koi bada chota nahi hota hai in knowledge there is no higher or lower see how beautifully he brought out uh, the two sides what is the most i'll put it this way provocatively what is the most precious thing in life what is the greatest thing in life one can achieve the moment you achieve it you will be permanently um, unshakably fulfilled and happy what's this most precious thing it is love love of god bhakti devotion and what about knowledge knowledge is truth <laughs> somebody a monk put it this way if you want to sleep peacefully at night do karma yoga self be selfless in life you will you will have a great load of your back our selfishness is the load that we carry on our backs and he says if you want great peace of mind practice raja yoga deep meditation if you want happiness practice bhakti yoga you will be immediately happy fall in love with god you'll be immediately happy but if you want truth <laughs> gyani yoga this is a reference to the 12th chapter um, where arjuna asks so you have taught me these two paths the path of the unmanifest uh, of uh, existence consciousness bliss you know pure consciousness and the path of devotion to god which is higher who is the greater yogi and krishna in no uncertain terms says that the path of devotion is better but he says not higher he says it is easier the path of um attainment of the unmanifest of pure consciousness of realization of yourself as pure consciousness krishna says that it is um, uh, it is attended to by greater difficulties that's all and then he also goes on to say that those who walk on the path of knowledge of back path of realization of i am brahman they too will attain the same reality see the uh, insight of sri ramakrishna vivekananda no, was that these are different constitutions of our minds our spiritual life has actually it has not started in this life what contrary to whatever you might think many people come and say i wish i had known about this earlier <laughs> you knew about it earlier you've known about it in past lives you've just come back to it again <laughs> so we have been developing in a particular way for a long time so that accounts for our tendencies so something might come much more easily to you if it comes more easily to you if it seems more real to you it seems more live to you then that's your path that doesn't mean the other path is lower or um, less important another person might take to that path uh, more easily the, our constitutions are a little different and therefore the path of bhakti might be suitable to many many people uh, path of gyan also might be suitable to many people you take to, there are people who cannot believe in god straight up unfortunately they are skeptical and with good reason in this day and age there are more and more such people and i have seen a lot of people benefit from the path of knowledge a lot of people and i have seen a lot of people coming to the path of knowledge drawn to that getting some conviction in that clarity in that and then developing bhakti mm. that has also happened 